Hello, it is Thursday, October 14th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword Daily Solve. And this is truly a return to the Daily Solve. I will be solving today's puzzle, not a historical puzzle. Although, if you missed yesterday's solve of the absolutely incredible 1996 U.S. Election Day puzzle, please do check that out. And um, I definitely saw that a number of you in the comments shared my admiration and uh, astonishment at that puzzle. And actually, in lieu of discussing clues from yesterday's standard New York Times crossword puzzle, I did want to read a comment from Gemini Mish, perhaps this is pronounced on the video from yesterday's legendary crossword, who points out, I think it's also worth mentioning about the long clue in the top. Counterpoint to Mr. President is prognostication, a prediction of a future event. Just another tidy symmetry in an already awesomely cool puzzle. Thank you for highlighting it. So yes, that's a very good point. I remember sort of lingering on prognostication a bit, but not returning to it after the theme of the puzzle had been fully revealed. Uh, and that is indeed a very clever little um, answer. And it does mirror Mr. President. So you've got that nice um, grid symmetry as well, the radial symmetry. Okay, so uh, before I get on to uh, today's puzzle, I am going to quickly again mention the Patreon campaign, which is how you can help directly support this channel and make it sustainable going forward. I just yesterday put up the monthly bonus puzzle, the New York Times monthly bonus puzzle, which this month was entitled World Space Week. And it was a pretty gentle solve. So you should uh, have a go yourself at the monthly bonus puzzle if you have access to the New York Times crossword um, app or website. And, and then go watch the video on Patreon if you are a Patreon supporter. You can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you can get bonus solves as well as special access to the Daily Solve Discord server, which as a reminder is free for anyone to join most of the channels. And there is, as I've mentioned a few times, a really wonderful fledgling crossword constructor scene going on over on the Discord server. So if you'd like to play some crosswords that were made by other viewers of this series and even give them feedback and help them improve, that is what's going on in the other crosswords channel on the Discord server. And there's a link to that in the description field underneath the video, which is also where you can find a link to the uh, Patreon campaign. And finally, one more thing to mention. This was a really nice thing, I thought. I was interviewed by a, a journalist over at uh, the Fanbyte website, and um, they asked me questions about solving these crosswords on this channel and how maybe it relates to um, game design, which is my day job and and uh, why I started doing this and, and what it's like. So anyway, if you're interested in reading an interview with me by Oshin Kunka over on Fanbyte, I will put a link to that underneath the video as well. So, and also thank you, Oshin, for that interview. It was very enjoyable for me. And I hope enjoyable to your readers. So, with all that said and done, let's get on to today's crossword. This is a Thursday puzzle by Matt Fuchs, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And as a Thursday puzzle, it might be slightly complicated or it might have an ambitious or involved theme. We don't know yet, we'll just have to see. But I think I'm ready to get started. Okay, long-term appeal, long-term appeal. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know if this means appeal as in attraction or appeal. Maybe there's something slightly punny going on and it's an appeal, a court appeal or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm going to move on. Rockstar Cobain is Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. So let's check the crosses. Why not? We'll use them right now. Puzzle whose name comes from the Japanese for cleverness squared. I don't know. Maybe Ken Ken? I don't remember what Ken Ken is, but it is some sort of puzzle. And the reason I think it might be this is because I'm wondering if squared, maybe maybe each individual Ken means cleverness. And so you, when you sort of multiply them together, you get cleverness squared. I don't know, but that's my guess. We'll have to just see if it's confirmed. World traveler, world traveler. And there's a pun. Uh, 
I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm going to move on. Here we have high blank. It could be high res, as in high resolution, a monitor or a television. And it could be spelled Z or S. So I'm going to leave it blank for now. Uh, oh, although I just sort of glanced at this cross, and it's a theme answer. And it says, my allergies are really acting up. And I don't necessarily know what that means, but it did occur to me that if res is spelled with an S, this could be nose, which sort of relates to allergies. Oh, is World Traveler UFO unidentified flying object, maybe? Oops. Perhaps? Let's, let's keep going with this little speculative bit of fill up in the sort of central north s segment of the grid. Fountain near the Spanish Steps. Oh, the Trevi Fountain, I think, in Rome? Sort of sounds familiar. To postpone as enrollment would be to defer enrollment. And an Easter egg de um, decorator is a dyer, someone who dyes the eggs for Easter, I would imagine. My allergies are really acting up. Something about a runny nose? What would that be, though? I runny nose <laughs> doesn't make any sense. What would this be? Unusual time to start a vacation. Perhaps midweek? Is that unusual? I don't know. I always think that's sort of a good time to start a vacation because you can get a bit of time checked in with your workmates as opposed to being on the entire week and then same with the following week. I don't know. Anyway, maybe that's unusual. Maybe not the answer, though. Uh, okay. Absolutely informally. It could be deaf. For definitely, perhaps? My, no, my allergy, no, wouldn't have my in it. Because I was going to wonder if this phrase, my allergies are really acting up, has my in it, my red nose or something, but it wouldn't because the clue already contains the word my. And I'm, I mean, there, there might be exceptional cases where this isn't true, but generally speaking, you are not going to have any words from the clue in the answer. Um, I don't know. Let's check this midweek and see, because this, this area actually looks fairly good. So put away could be stow away. And remember when you see those, this has come up several times this week, I think, but when you see the parentheses in the clue, that means that the parentheses aren't required for the, the main word itself to match. So put matches stow. Those two things are actually the two equivalents. But then a way could be appended to both for an even more accurate match. So put away and stow away are incredibly similar. And that's what that is doing. It's just a little helper, essentially. Okay, how, Q, question, how much does it cost to park at stadiums? Answer, a lot, I suppose, a little bit of a dad joke there, a lot. A parking lot. Is this bloody nose? Oh, I see. Sorry. A little bit slow there. My allergies are really acting up. Bloody nose. You're sort of, you're addressing your nose and lightly swearing at it. Bloody nose. Okay. So the phrase doesn't actually necessarily have anything to do with allergies. This is a phrase that you might say because of your allergies, but doesn't mean allergies, because allergies, generally speaking, I wouldn't think would would actually literally bloody a nose. Okay, so maze runners could be lab mice. And National Medal of Arts recipient whose novel Juneteenth was published posthumously. I don't know, actually. Who has a novel named for Juneteenth? I don't know. Hopefully I can get that with some crosses. Special treats. Good something. What was this again? Oh, long-term of fields. Oh, sorry, long-term appeal. Legs. Right. I think this whole New York crossword, New York Times crossword thing has legs. At least for me, it certainly has legs. I'm on 930 something daily streak, I think. Okay. Special treats. I'm still not seeing that. It. Is this Ellison? Not leave to chance. Like Swarthmore, but not Bryn Mawr. Oh, co-ed, maybe co-educational. Um, 
it's not uh, there's no gender or sex requirement to attend the, the the university. So here we have it blank pompous arrivals declaration. Well, it's certainly not it me. It must be it is I, which I suppose you could say is a little pompous. And special treats are goodies. Okay, there we go. So I think this this whole area has actually worked out fine. And then here, a lemon or a turkey. Each of those is a way to refer to a dud. You bought one and it's just not really, it's busted. It's a dud. And remember when you see that or, even though there are two words here, it's not a plural. It's an or, so it's singular because the dud is either the lemon or the turkey, not lemons and the turkeys, which would be duds. So, to not leave to chance is to ensure something happens. And then up to the ante could be raised, perhaps, in a poker game. Raised your bet. An old-fashioned preposition. It could be air, E-R-E, -R -E, a sort of poetic or quaint way of saying before. I guess a, I guess a well-known example of that is the Christmas poem. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the one about Santa Claus and at the end... Air he drove out of sight, he said good night. I boy, I butchered that whole thing, didn't I? Okay. I kept losing things in the dryer. Oh, okay. I think I know what this is. Based on bloody nose, this will be darn socks, I suspect. Because to darn socks is to mend socks. That that in itself is also a somewhat um quaint idiom, I suppose. And or maybe not an idiom, but just quaint usage. And in this case, we are lightly cursing our socks because they keep going missing in the dryer. So there we go. So we're getting our theme. We are we are starting to assemble our theme, and I bet this will be one as well. It is, yes. We see that it's italicized, and I didn't mention that, but sometimes, not always, but sometimes in the crossword, you will see uh, a number of clues italicized, and that could mean something clever that only pertains to that particular clue, but often, I would say most often, what it means is that the clues that are all italicized share something around the puzzle's theme. And in this case, that is clearly uh, what is going on. So that third strike cost us the game. Um, now, these, each of these is sort of a light bit of swearing, you know, you know very, very light, not, not really full on profanity, but they're slightly aggressive exclamations. And I wonder if that is just a coincidence or if they're all that way, because I was sitting here, I'm sitting here trying to imagine, oh, I guess it could be freaking, that would sort of fit that bill. I was just going to say that could be a coincidence and these could simply be common phrases that don't have that very lightly aggressive cast to them, but this could be that. So what would be, what would that be? Third strike. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not confident enough to put that in, so I'm just going to look at some crosses here. A prize fight ending. So the first thing that came to mind for me was KO, KO for knockout in a boxing match. But that is obviously too few letters. But is, there, is it possible that that's sometimes phonetically spelled out like this, K-A-Y-O? I don't really know. I'm, I'm sort of, <laughs> I'm leaning in that direction because it would allow me to refill these cells how I had them a moment ago. Food industry lobby for short. I don't know. NFA, National Farmers Association, I'm guessing there. I, I, I've never heard of that, so that's completely speculative. A run for fun, perhaps. I don't know. That might be might be a 1K or a 2K or something. A one or two kilometer run. I don't neither of those would fit with KO. If this were K, what would this look like? Call upon. Two Ks in a row looks pretty unlikely, and I am fairly confident about darn socks. Call upon. Don't know. What about this? Microsoft surfaces, e.g. Well, those are PCs, they're computers, personal computers. So that looks okay with socks and then run for fun. Okay. So maybe that's not either of the things I was thinking. So if we did put a Y back in there, oh, oh, wow. This is very tricky, very um, 
sly clue here. A run for fun. In this case, for instance, you mistype fun as run, and that's a typo. And in fact, R and F, the the two letters being swapped, are adjacent on on the keyboard. R is right above the F. So you could imagine you could imagine um, hitting that as a typo. So that would actually put KO back in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put that A in here, and at least an N here. It might not have a G because it could be contracted to freaking, but let's do that and look here. A place to purchase pencils and paint. Ah, it could be an art shop. And then here we have architect. Oh, yeah. So I am pay. Uh, this architect's name is usually formatted I dot M dot pay. Very famous architect. He designed, I think, the pyramid in front of the Louvre Museum in Paris and, I mean, countless other incredibly famous buildings. But I don't know how to spell his full name because I've, I'm realizing, looking at this, I've pretty much only ever seen it written, I am pay. So we'll have to get some crosses there. The Big Easy, that's New Orleans, which I think is often abbreviated N-O-L-A for New Orleans, Louisiana, L-A. Head across the pond. This is a loo. Across the pond, meaning on the other side of the Atlantic from the United States, which would be here in the UK, where I am, uh, where the head, the toilet, is referred to as the loo. So there you go. This is a pretty common general construction in the New York Times crossword is cluing loo with something about the head and then something that indicates, uh, you know, I don't know, English head or something like that. It happens quite often. Okay, chooses to receive marketing emails, say, could be opts in, opts into marketing emails. To stand by the pool, maybe. Stand by the pool. I don't know, sorry. Here we have another theme clue in italics. My iPhone never works. This kind of looks like something around apps, doesn't it? But then I don't know how why there'd be two letters. So that actually might just be coincidence that's leading me astray. Could be something around tapping because you tap things on your phone screen. I don't know. Wearer of a Y sweatshirt. <clears throat> this could very well be a little bit of arguable crossword ease here. This could be why referring to Yale University in the United States, whose alumni are often referred to as Eli's, named after the founder, I think, Elihu Yale of Yale University. And so my that's my guess here. I'm not completely certain, but I, that's my guess. And what is this? Have we looked at this recently? Oh, call upon. Right. Now that we have these crosses, it's clearly invoke. So there we go as in invoke someone's name, that sort of thing. YouTube content, ah, well, <laughs> exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm producing YouTube content, I'm producing videos. And content is a noun that could be either a singular, well, I suppose more accurately, it's a collective noun that could contain any number of videos, including one. So this that would be valid, Phil, I think, for either video or videos, but in this case, we have too many letters for it to simply be singular. Okay, um, sh wired, not sure, it could be wired, caffeinated, or miked, surveilled. Shooting stars, meteors, I suppose. And what's the point in me even trying? Um, it's interesting that there isn't a question mark here. I wonder if that means, because obviously, what's the point in me even trying is technically a question, even though it's purely rhetorical. But I wonder if that's actually indicating that this answer will not be a question. It will be a statement that means the same thing. It could start with I. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Let's check some crosses. Here we have Captain in the Mysterious Island. Captain Nemo. Jules Verne. And Sicily's highest peak is uh, Mount Etna, I believe. If one is wired, could one be on something? On Oh, on edge. There we go. So it was actually neither of the, the senses that I was implying, although you might be on edge because of an excess of caffeine. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. 
That third strike cost us the game. Freaking out. I see. That's quite clever. So again, we are very lightly castigating the out in this case. We're saying, ah, freaking out in a baseball game. That third strike, which led to an out, cost us the game. Freaking out. There we go. What's the point in me even trying? I'm no use, right? There we go. So indeed, this isn't a question. It's a, a sad exclamation. And a frost bit, ah. So this is referring to Robert Frost, the American uh, poet who's probably best known for his poem about coming upon a, the taking the road less traveled than a fork in the woods. Anyway, a verse, a verse from a poem. Not an ode in that case, the one I was referring to. Spanish 101 verb. Oh, I don't know. This would be an infinitive, I suppose. And I don't know Spanish well enough to know what, what the common infinitives are. So let's keep looking around. Glass elevator. Oh, clever. So this is a, a toaster, someone who elevates their glass, which I don't, I have a mug, unfortunately, not a glass, but would elevate it to make a toast. And then here we have leave off, which is omit, which is perfectly clear. So there we go. Mitch's husband on Modern Family. Not sure, but with only three letters, hopefully we can get it fairly straightforwardly with crosses eventually. Calligraphy details. Ah, oh, this has come up earlier this week. I assume this to be serifs, which as I mentioned the other day, are the little feet that you see in serif fonts, which an example of which is used to typeset the crossword up at the top of the page here. And you can see those little feet that extend from the end of the, the strokes on the individual letters. Those are serifs. And so I think that's what this is. Typical college interviewees. This could be seniors, seniors in high school in the United States who are going to be applying to college or university. Um, so here we have Ella Fitzgerald Forte. Could be scat. Ella Fitzgerald did sing scat sometimes. Uh, that's the style of jazz singing in which instead of singing uh, words, you sing abstract syllables. Um, so it's more sort of purely musical, I guess, as opposed to being lyrical. All right. Nickname for the Sub-Zero 1967 NFL championship game. I don't know, but unfortunately, the Sub-Zero bit, which uh, has already, the, 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 the part that I think can be inferred without knowing anything about this has already been given through crosses, which is the ice bit. So I don't know, maybe the ice rink or ice game or something. Well, it wouldn't be game because the game is in the clue. And as we already noted earlier, that doesn't tend to happen. So balls in a pocket. Um, I don't know. And here we have recipe that might call for ginger and soy sauce. Could be a stir fry with all those crosses there. And one who's got your back could be an ally. Does that, oops, 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 oops. Ugh. I've lost where I was. Anyway, whatever, we'll move on. I was going to check those crosses, but now I've given up. Stand by the pool, maybe, right, not sure. Wackadoodle, could end in Y. Oh, prize declined by Sarge. Could it be the Nobel Prize? And then it may be on the house. Oh, it could be a lien placed on your house. So if you've failed to uh, pay your mortgage payments, for instance, the bank might put a lien on the house. And then here we have a scented souvenir. Could be a lei, which is the floral wreath placed around your neck, often in Hawaii. Oh, here we have, like many, a campfire, a campfire story, which could be eerie. And I don't think we've looked at these acrosses down here. Oh, there's a, um, a theme, but first let's quickly do this. This is the Marquis de Sade, sort of famous or I guess arguably infamous sort of libertine character. Okay. Well, I mean, real historical figure, but I mean character in the colloquial sense. This bug spray is useless. Oh, something off. You're going to be saying, oh, buzz off or something like that. And then this will be a brand of bug spray, I assume. Bla uh, actually don't know. But it's going to have to be a common phrase as well. So you'd think this would be fairly straightforward. What is this? Is after you. Ah, are. <laughs> so you wouldn't say, so this is what this means. is the equivalent of the word is that literally follows the word you. So you wouldn't say you is. You would say you are the second person plural as opposed to singular. So what is this? I don't know. I'll have to keep checking some crosses. Oh, and by the way, uh, 
you know, I mentioned that sometimes you have theme clues with that are set in italics like this. And often the reason that will happen is that there isn't a revealer in the puzzle. There, you know, often with themes, as you've as you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, um, often with themes there will be what's called a revealer answer, which is a sort of explanatory clue that gives you some more context around the theme. So with this bloody nose freaking out darn socks, you could imagine a revealer whose answer is something like light swearing or something. I mean, that's that's pretty on the nose. It would probably be more clever than that. But you, you could have a clue that would say something that would indicate light swearing and then say, or a hint to solving. And then it might say 16 across, 23 across, 36 across, 50 and 52 across or something like that. And often that would be located here as predicted by Lyle's Law, one of the viewers of this channel, Lyle, who observed once that the, re the revealer tends to be found towards the bottom of the grid in the across clues. Uh, but we don't have that this time. And that I think is why the clues are italicized because it's a way of grouping them together without a revealer, which would ordinarily serve that function. Anyway, so in this case, it is up to us to infer the theme, which I think we have done. Okay, diet friendly. Light, perhaps? I'm wondering if this is alluding to the common way that light, L-I-G-H-T, is used in marketing often, L-I-T-E, to refer to low-calorie foods. Could be. And to just scrape by could be to eke by. Oh, oh, I see. Blasted off. Right, I see. So... Is blasted the name of bug spray? I have, I have no clue. I've never heard of that. But blasted off is certainly a phrase. You know, a, a rocket could have blasted off, and then that also fits the theme in the sense that. Oh no, sorry, I am an idiot. Off is the bug spray. I apologize. You were probably e yelling about me about this at me through the screen because I completely mixed up where the where each bit goes. So off must be the name of a bug spray. And you'd be saying, oh, blasted off. This this bug spray is useless. So there we go. Apologies for my tardiness on that one. So stand by the pool, maybe. Oh, a tiki bar. Very clever. Wow. Okay. I was, um, I was, I think, as most people probably would initially as well, I was reading this as a verb, to stand by the pool. What is it, what might, and because it says maybe, I was thinking, well, it's not a definition of standing by the pool. It's something you might be doing while standing by the pool. And I was trying to think, because I think the T was the first letter we had here. Maybe it has something to do with dipping a toe in, something like that. But no, it's none of these things. It is a stand as in a kiosk or something like that. It is a tiki bar. That's very clever. A bit of creativity might be an idea. A water pitcher is a ewer. E-W-E-R, slightly archaic term for that. So here we have that Sub-Zero NFL games, the ice bowl, fair enough. And balls in a pocket, oh, falafel, that's clever. So I suppose they mean inside of uh, sort of a flatbread, something like that. That's that's quite clever. I've not seen that before, balls in a pocket, falafel. That's that's pretty good. And here we have, I think, our, our final unfilled uh, theme clue and answer. I see my iPhone never works. So Apple, right. Okay. So what is, so what makes this up this time? The first word is going to be the light exclamatory, not quite swear. And what would that be? You know, I'm still not seeing it, unfortunately, but let's, let's move on. Um, I think there are downs we've not even looked at yet. Business that offers body waxing. Is this a particular business, a chain or something, or is it a category of businesses? I'm not sure. Let's, let's move on for now. Creatures named for their changing shape. Chimeras, perhaps? No. No. And I suppose a chimera doesn't change shape, necessarily. It just is, well, I don't know. Let's move on. Roald Dahl heroine. Could be Matilda. Roald Dahl novel for children. Word with fair or fight. 
Not sure. And then what is this? Oh, right. Mitch's husband on Modern Family. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. Hoard could be to amass. My iPhone. Oh, rotten apple. Here we go. Ah, rotten apple. So, I mean, this, you know, again, a very light little bit of uh, exclamatory anger, but it fits perfectly with the others. Rotten, blasted, darn, bloody, freaking. And rotten apple is a perfectly valid normal phrase, so that all works. And word with fair or fight, right. So what is this? Fair. Oh, street fair? Right, street fair or street fight. So this is this is clever. I mean, this is this is maybe a bit of intentional light misdirection here. I was certainly thinking that fair was going to be the adjective, that fair was going to be the thing that modified the word that went in here. But in fact, fair is a noun in this case, a fair meaning, um, you know, a, a, a gathering, an event. And street is in fact the modifier. It is, street is the sort of fair this is. And then similarly with fight, they street fight. So there we go. Wackadoodle. Oh, weirdo perhaps? This could be a noun rather than an adjective. And then fit for the task, one could be able, up to the task at hand. Pressure informally could be heat. There's a lot of heat on me, a lot of pressure on me to solve this crossword right now. A business that, oh, I see, a business that offers body waxing. Once again, a little bit of misdirection on this Thursday puzzle. I was thinking body waxing, indeed, not the case. It is car waxing, and a car wash might offer that service. And then, oh, creature's name for their changing shape would be amoeba, plural of amoeba, amoeba, plural of amoeba. And then Mitch's husband and modern family must be Cam. There we go. Okay, so that was a Thursday puzzle and um, a pretty good self-explanatory theme. Definitely not as wacky as some Thursday themes can be or certainly have been recently. Often on a Thursday, you'll get something like a rebus, which is when several letters go into one cell or you will have shaded squares and those will spell out a word or there you'll have a word that, you know, takes a 90 degree turn halfway through the answer and then continues in a different direction. You'll have all sorts of things on a Thursday. This was none of those. This was just a purely thematic theme, the most straightforward uh, version of a theme. And in fact, there wasn't even a revealer. We just had, uh, what, five? Yeah, five different exclamations that are ordinary phrases that also have this secondary meaning given to us in the clue. So that was the theme. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let me know how you fared with this Thursday puzzle. It wasn't as it wasn't as inaccessible as some Thursday puzzles can be. This is interesting. The uh, I am Pei's name. I, I wouldn't even know how to pronounce this, unfortunately. I uh, Ming Ming Pei. I don't uh, what Wo Ming Pei? I don't know. That might be a W sound. Someone more informed than I will have to explain it to me in the comments, and I certainly hope they do, and if not, I'll just look it up myself, uh, which is fine. So, yes, there were some very clever clues in here. I thought uh, balls in a pocket as falafel was pretty clever, and tiki bar for stand by the pool, that's, that's very clever. Such an innocuous clue leading to something pretty specific, like tiki bar. Uh, I like that. And car wash being a business that offers body waxing was, I think, also uh, pretty clever. I mean, there, there was a lot of light misdirection in this puzzle. Similarly, I don't, you know, street for fair fight isn't, isn't misdirection in the same way as something like business that offers body waxing, but, uh, but I did have to tweak the way I was thinking about it a bit to ultimately get there. And then head across the pond. I mean, this is a little bit of wordplay. I'm only highlighting it if anything, because it's it's unlike some of these other ones, it is not something that is that that feels novel to me. It's in fact a very standard trope in New York Times crossword cluing is to refer to a loo with something about head that uh, being a head and then referring to it being in Britain with some clever, subtle hint. So look out for that. It comes up frequently. I don't know what this food industry lobby is, the NRA. 
Yeah, I don't know what that is. I mean, I assume it's not the National Rifle Association, but I, I don't know what it is. And then Ken Ken, Cleverness Squared. That's interesting. So that was that did end up being correct. I'll have to look back, uh, look that up and see what that is. I'm pleased with myself for remembering the Trevi Fountain near the Spanish Steps. That was uh, lucky knowledge on my part, I suppose. Um, yeah, good, good uh, solid Thursday puzzle. Again, do let me know how you fared. I hope you enjoyed. Well, I hope you enjoyed solving the puzzle if you did, or uh, if not, watching the puzzle on video. And I hope you enjoyed this series generally. If you're new to the series, give it a subscription. Subscribe to the channel. You'll see these videos, these solves, as they go up each morning. And if you've been watching for a while and you still aren't subscribed, why? Please, please subscribe. Why not? Subscribe to the channel, and then at the very least, you'll know about these videos. You don't have to watch every single one, but if you do, of course, I'd be appreciative. And if you find you have been watching quite a few of these and you would like to help contribute to its ongoing sustainability, do check out the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve, which is linked in the description field underneath each video. And there you can find, as I said, the bonus solves, such as the monthly New York Times puzzle that I put up yesterday. Also, special access to the Discord chat server, where people are constructing wonderful new crosswords that are free for you to solve, which is fun. And uh, people, everyone's sort of pitching in, helping giving, give feedback and refine those puzzles. And I think at least one of the constructors is hoping to submit one of one of their constructions to the New York Times. So I'll be very curious to see what that process ends up looking like. And uh, anyway, if you're interested in that sort of thing, um, head over to the Patreon campaign or join the Discord um, with or without being a Patreon member. But one other thing you can get through the Patreon at higher tiers is an exclusive mug that will be released in the coming months and also recognition at the end of these videos as my appreciation for helping this series continue to exist. And today I would like to personally thank Jeff and Sinead Woodlocky, as well as, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to Jeff and Sinead and Hood Monster for helping keep the series going. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you will all patrons and non-patrons alike, join me again tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. Might be a bit trickier than this one, uh, but no theme. Our first themeless puzzle of the week is Friday, and so come back and check that out with me. I hope you do, and thank you for making it to the very end of this video. I hope you have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.